uh, Tory party chair facing further questions over his financial affairs after it emerged he settled a dispute with tax authorities while he was Chancellor. On Saturday, Nadeem Zahawi said that he'd pay the HMRC a sum linked to what he called a careless error. Joined now by the uh, Labour supporting tax expert Dan Needle, who investigated Mr Zahawi's affairs. Hello, Lacey. Thanks for joining us on the programme this morning. Yeah, no problem. So, can I uh, just... What... Uh, on the Labour supporting thing, uh, yeah. I advise politicians of all four main parties, and I've annoyed politicians of all four main parties. Our, our work is non-partisan, and most people respect that. But what about you? Do you support the Labour Party? You're not a Labour Party uh, member, though. Personally, I support the Labour Party, but I keep right. my tax okay. analysis and my legal work separate from my private political views. Always have done. OK. Why did Nadeem Zahawi's tax affairs first come to your attention? So back in July, there was a report in some of the press that the NCA, the SFO and HMRC had investigated his tax. And he denied it, but then you wouldn't necessarily know if you're being investigated. So I started looking and... I saw something very odd in the way that his original founder's shares in YouGov were structured. And from that, I concluded it looked like he had not paid about 3.7 million in tax. He denied that. He Not only did he deny it, he threatened to sue me and other newspapers looking at it. And the whole thing went really rather quiet until it was revealed just um, a week and a day ago that at the same time he was denying it and sending threatening letters to people, he'd actually fessed up to HMRC that he did owe the tax and he paid it, plus penalties. Um, when Mr Zahawi uh, spoke to me on the 11th of July last year, when he was hoping to be the next Prime Minister um, during the leadership battle for Number 10, he said neither he nor his wife had benefited from any offshore funds... Yeah. Why do you? I saw, why do you? Sorry. Why do you say that he has? So I saw that, and my jaw dropped because there was clear evidence in a YouGov disclosure from 2005 that we, we just have it by but by some corporate quirk. We see this that he benefited because he received ninety nine thousand pounds from Bolshevik investments held by the trust. That's not my supposition or a guess. Absolute fact, and yet he denied that to you. I, I, I said to his lawyers, why is he saying this to Kay Burley when the evidence says it's not true? And they wouldn't reply. How much do now, you calculate? Go on, sorry, go on. Sorry. So, so that was 99,000. If you receive 99,000 and we just discover it by luck, it's fair to infer there'd been other payments. And now, if he was, as reports suggest, actually taxed and paid 3.7 million, I'm guessing on about 27 million of income and gains he didn't declare then that suggests he received a lot of money, millions of pounds, from the trust. And he told you he didn't benefit at all. Do we, do we know for a fact, though, that he has received more than the £99,000, which you say there is a paper trail for? Do we, do we know that he has received other we, money? We don't know how he received it, but if he was taxed £3.7 million pounds plus penalties and didn't receive any money, and that's a huge injustice, and I'm behind him 100%, I, I'm guessing he would have said so. You don't, you're not generally taxed on money that you don't get. How much do you calculate that he has, because we don't know, how much do you calculate that he has paid to HMRC? Um, well, we don't know, but the leaks suggested a figure of 3.7 million plus interest and penalties, and that is so close to the figure that I estimated that it makes me think that my original supposition back in July was correct. So how much money do you think he's received? I, I think he will have received about £27 million pounds and not paid tax on it. Until eventually he was forced to because it was being reported, didn't admit it, denied it, threatened to sue people and went to HMRC to quietly settle it. He said that HMRC has accepted that he made a mistake and his error was careless and not deliberate. Why yeah. is that not the end of the matter? Well, to say it's not deliberate as if it's a triumphant result is, is, is a bit is a bit funny. If it was deliberate, he'd be arrested for criminal tax evasion. Careless means something specific. Careless means that you didn't behave in a reasonable way. A, a reasonable way is you instruct decent tax advisors, you tell them the truth, you follow their advice, you check your final tax returns. 
best you can. If you do those things, then even if it turns out the tax was wrong, even if your tax advisors were total clowns, you're not careless. So if you're careless, it often means you didn't get advice at all. In his case, that would mean he could have received the money, 27 million pounds perhaps, not taken advice and not paid tax. If that is what happened, that's a huge deal. Um, how will we find out? Well, we have no way to find out because HMRC, quite rightly, have a duty of confidentiality. However, if Mr Zahawi thinks he needs to continue to be a senior politician, he owes us an honest answer. He needs to explain exactly what happened, explain exactly why he didn't pay the tax, and most importantly, explain why he told me, told you in that interview, to, to, told pretty much everyone that his tax affairs were hunky-dory at the same time that he knew they weren't. Are you suggesting that he intentionally avoided tax? No, if he'd intentionally avoided tax, then that would be criminal tax evasion. Uh, and he would have been dishonest. I can't read his mind. He says, and I've no reason to disbelieve him, HMRC concluded that he was careless, not deliberate. But I am suggesting he deliberately didn't tell me and you and everyone else that there was a problem with his tax affairs when he knew there was. And I'm also suggesting that he told you he had no interest in the trust when he must have done. Um, a non-deliberate error not set up an offshore structure to avoid tax is what the HMRC has accepted. He hasn't broken the law. He has paid any outstanding monies with a 30% pen penalty or thereabouts. Um, I suppose a lot of people watching this morning would say, surely, you know, he's, he's put his hands up, he made a mistake, he's paid the money he needed to, that's it. Well, we, we, we all make mistakes. I, mean, I lost a pen yesterday. I have no idea where it was. Um, I, felt, I felt ridiculous. I was, I was using it. A, a mistake where you don't declare £27 million? I mean, if we accept everything he says, and that wasn't intentional, that, that's an amazing mistake to make. And you've got to question whether someone who makes that mistake is suitable for public life. For me, though, that's less important than the quite deliberate fact that he, when he knew there was something wrong with his tax affairs sent lawyers after me and others trying to report on it and told you that he had no interest in a trust, which he surely did. And then, Zay, we, we should we come to the, the bit that you, that you mentioned earlier that I, I haven't picked up. Best of all, worst of all, he went to HMRC to negotiate a settlement when he was Chancellor of the Exchequer. So what do you want to happen? It could be there's an innocent explanation for this, which makes perfect sense. I, I lack the imagination to see it. And if there isn't one, I think he should resign. I noticed um, a tweet that you, you, I think it was yesterday, um, you say um, that Mr Zahawi's lawyers have written to you denying that HMRC investigated him under COP9, the procedure for investigating fraud. Um, just explain that to me. Well, I was interested in his in his statement. He said they concluded it wasn't deliberate, it was a mistake, which suggested perhaps they thought at one point it was deliberate. So I asked him, did, what did it start out as a fraud investigation? And he said no. OK. Um, I've, I've seen a, a note from Mr Zahawi's lawyers um, responding to you saying that Mr Zahawi's not being investigated for fraud, so his tax repayment was not being blown out of proportion since it's not being considered currently um, as anything criminal. Is that reasonable to say? If everything he says is true, then, then, then yes, it wasn't criminal. It, it, was, it was a careless mistake, but I think we want higher standards from our politicians than not being criminal, don't we? We seem to be at some of a standoff, though, don't we? Because you you want him to come clean and basically to resign because you feel that when he was Chancellor, you can't have any uh, investigation by HMRC, even though you said that he probably didn't know uh, initially that his, his tax affairs were being investigated while you're Chancellor. So um, what would be but, gained? Kay, how do you how do you feel, Kay, that he, you asked him a direct question and he gave you an answer which is absolutely false when it comes to the £99,000, and he knew that, and which is almost certainly false given he's paying the tax? How, have you had a politician give you an answer which, which we know was false? Has that happened before? 
<laughs> many, many, many times. <laughs> okay, um, I'm crushingly naive. I was shocked. <laughs> Many times, but uh, you know, you, you're telling me that um, he was being economical with the actuality when he was speaking uh, to me. You say that, that you've got this figure of ninety-nine thousand pounds, and you can then leap and surmise that potentially uh, he benefited in the form of twenty-seven million pounds. But what I'm saying is, if you find the ninety-nine thousand, why why can you not find the rest? Oh, the only way we find the ninety-nine thousand is there was accidentally an unlawful loan made to the, the directors. It's a mistake, it happens all the time. And that was repaid via a gift. And because it had been an unlawful loan, the way it was repaid is disclosed in some 2005 documents. It's a complete fluke, we we, we can find that out. Normally we'd have no way to see the gifts. Well, you want him to resign because you feel that he hasn't behaved uh, appropriately while in public office. He threatened um, to sue me for reporting on something which he denied and turns out to be true. Uh, I, I don't think politicians should do that. Uh, what's going to happen next? Well, I expect people will keep asking him to come clean and he will either come clean and provide a satisfactory explanation and I will eat my collection of hats or he won't come clean and we'll have to resign. And the £99,000, which is the only figures that you can find at the moment, we don't even know how much he's paid to HMRC or if indeed he has, but he says that he's paid some. We don't know if that includes a mm. fine or or not. Oh, we, we um, do, because he admits being careless, which absolutely means there was a penalty. The, the word careless has a particular tax meaning. OK, OK. I didn't understand that. Thank you for explaining that. Um, you will continue on with this, though, will you, until you try to uncover more funds or have to eat those hats? I will. I, I prefer doing nerdy tax policy that hardly anyone reads, but I'm not going to let this drop. OK, it's good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed for joining us on the programme. Thank you. Thank you very much.